Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, sort of a weird exchange uh, on Twitter, and I wouldn't have seen it if Brian Hitch hadn't retweeted and commented on it, but it's the original tweet, and the person who did it, and I, I, well, let me just read it to you a little bit, because um, it's it's either funny or sad or maybe both, I'm, I'm not sure, but this isn't your normal kind of, you know, Twitter silliness, but Axel Braun, now if you're unfamiliar with Axel Braun, Axel Braun uh, creates, makes uh, movies, in this case, porn uh, parodies. Uh, he makes all, I think he makes other kinds of porn, but he's become well known for uh, basically you put XXX at the end of any kind of major film, and, and he seems to really enjoy, uh, you know, superhero films. He, he, I think I've seen interviews with him in the past, and he just really loves kind of superheroes, Marvel, DC. He's not particular, he just really loves it. And so he makes a number of, of porn parodies. Now, the weird, like, Thing about uh, Braun is that the uh, the covers or the posters that he puts out always look way better, or at least way more comic accurate than what the MCU and, and DC did. There was a, a few people had done a comparison a little while ago of of Wonder Woman and the Wonder Woman costume that Braun uh, you know kicked up for the cover uh, and for the posters for his film just looked a lot better. And, uh, and then he, you know, he, he, he I, 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 he's done a number of different films. And actually, if you're on YouTube, you can go search like Axel Braun minus the sex. And what it does is somebody trimmed out all of the porn bits and just gave you the plot. And, uh, you know, it, it's as, it's as good as you would expect. And you've seen some of the little bits in front of some of the videos lately. And this is kind of the, <laughs> this is the sad part because you look at the covers, you're like, this guy is making clearly a more comic accurate, better looking film than the MCU and the DCU. And then you, you know, if you actually watch the film, it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, it was just for the cover. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's not, you know, I mean, I think the guy is, you know, he's, he's also working with, uh, let's just say hardworking actors and actresses, but not necessarily um, classically trained in acting. Uh, but anyway, well, enough about that. I think he did the uh, Avengers movie where uh, China, uh, rest in peace, uh, played She-Hulk. And it was terrifying. Uh, anyway, so Axel Braun uh, tweets out, and you probably see on the screen here, rule number one of any comic book adaptation, give the fans what they want. And the little shrug emoji. When you have an actor who embodies a beloved character so perfectly, you keep him especially after you just made him announce his return and their little head explode emoji. And then the uh, hashtag fire James gun. So, uh, you know, I, I, everybody's, everybody is welcome to an opinion and uh, just Axel Braun is certainly welcome to an opinion. And I think by and large on the whole, I agree with this opinion. Um, it, uh, it, it, the, the challenge with the give fans what they want is that people take it to the most extreme kind of aspect of that sentence in order to attack it. So um, anyway, so so uh, Brian Hitch retweets and, and basically writes the absolute opposite of what creators need to do in any respect, which I, I disagree with. The the absolute opposite. No, this, these are these are people dealing in extremes. And and for what it's worth, Axel Braun um, says a couple things, three things I think that I I agree with. We'll get to the uh, give fans what they want last, because that's the one we want to talk about the most. But uh, first off, when you have an actor who embodies a beloved character perfectly, you keep him. I, I agree. You know, and I, I do think um, <laughs> I, I do think that the Superman casting was good. I feel bad for him because I feel like uh, he never got to be. A, I mean, I, I feel like the uh, the movies he was given uh, were not the best, and I would have liked to have seen him in something. Um, you know, written better with a little bit more care, but be that as it may, I'll get the Snyder fans after me for that one. Um, I do. I also agree. The second sense, especially after you just made him announce his return, that is is it, that is the kind of batshit crazy aspect about this. Um, you know, James Gunn new into the DCU, they're trying to figure things out. But why in the holy hell did they have you know, Henry Cavill come? You know, do that little post credit scene with The Rock, Black Adam. Uh, basically, you know, tease up a little movie, uh, have Gavel kind of announce that, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing more. And then a few weeks later, you know, have Gunn kind of snap at somebody 
who was saying there was a rumor he didn't like him, and then, you know, a couple days later, say, yeah, yeah, we're not doing it, we're moving on. Like, what a weird chain of events. No matter where you fit, like, whether you like Henry Cavell, hate Henry Cavell, like James Gunn, hate James Gunn, no, no matter who you like or hate in this whole scenario, that is a, a weird-ass chain of events to get from point A to point B. Why would you do all those things? Like, there's several steps in there where if you, if you just kept your mouth shut, no problem. Now you've got basically The Rock and Cavell both saying, well, we're done with DC. That's not the best uh, kickoff to your to your cinematic universe. It's just not. And it, it makes it that much harder. Put it this way. If you if you believe in Gunn, you believe he can he can turn around and make some good movies there, good for you. Um, and, and he can. He, he, he you know, Guardians uh, worked out and people like Peacemaker and I, Suicide Squad. I, I mean, I, I mean, it's fine. It, um, Suicide Squad felt to me like it was Guardians on Earth with, with different characters. It just it, it felt like a lot of the same to me. But, you know, that was the joke. That was the bit. So fine. Um, but why would you, you know, it, it's still going to be hard to win all those fans back. You've got a lot of angst out there. And so now, you know, now you're, you just made it harder on yourself with a lot of unforced errors. You didn't need to do several of those steps. And now you make it look like you, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And then uh, Gunn Reese, you know, uh, just today went out and did this big, long tweet storm of a bunch of like, we knew a small minority of the fans would be upset. It's like, oh, dude, you, you need to shut the fuck up. You know, the, you class, this is a classic case of Twitter is not your friend. You are digging a hole for yourself. You know, if, whenever you go in there, you just start poking people. It's like, but we believe that our integrity, like, okay, stop. Stop. All of you stop. And And by the way, whether... Whatever director you are, whether you're a small art house director to a big director, whatever you, you, you think you are, you're making entertainment for people. You may believe you're making high art. You may believe you're, you're you know, you could believe all the different reasons and the motivations for what you're doing. But at the end of the day, you're making entertainment for people. So don't, don't get on the high horse and start lecturing people. All you're doing is pissing more and more people off. And by the way, to kind of go, well, it's just a small handful of people that disagree with our decisions. Dude, you sound like a prick when you say it. That's that's the problem. You sound arrogant when that's your pitch. And so it, what we're finding is that even people who kind of like James Gunn are like, Ugh, why are you making it about this? Once again, why, you know, people should be waiting, kind of mysterious, wanting to know what's going to happen to DCU. And instead, it's turning into, you know, Snyder fans versus Warner Brothers part 18. It's It's just... That is exhausting to everybody, and people will move on. And what's going to happen is at some point in the next two to three years, guaranteed, they're going to put The Rock and Henry Cavill in a movie together. It has nothing to do with superheroes, and it's just going to be some kind of action film. And the two of them are going to do a bunch of PR, and they'll, they'll, they'll do a little bit of a, like, well, we, don't, we, never, we never say anything negative about people we worked with in the past. Wink. And then that movie's going to make money. Almost guaranteed. But this is, it's his first thing Braun said. Rule number one of any comic book adaptation, give the fans what they want. And then Brian Hitcher's response of the absolute opposite of what creators need to do in any respect. Um, I, no, you, look, here's the thing. When, when somebody says give the fans what they want, what that means is entertainment. It means if fans really, really love something and your goal is to take money from them, you should, uh, you know, try and make it easy on yourself to get that money. Th that's giving fans what they want. If fans say, you know, the thing that uh, the Superman story we've always wanted to see ad adapted, you know, is uh, the fight against Doomsday, and then that's that's what we want to see. If that's if if you if it's the X Men, the thing we always wanted to see was a Dark Phoenix saga. Please do an accurate, you know, translation of this beloved story. If the directors or writers are like, oh fuck those fans. We don't, they don't get what they want. No, we're going we're gonna to defy expectations. We're going to give them something different. We're going to give them what we think they need. That, that, that is horribly stupid. Giving fans what they want means the fans are going to give you kind of a general sense of the film they like. In no, wor no, the, no part of that statement is that uh, like the fans are going to come in and say, hey, director, we're going to tell you, like we want you to do a zoom here and then a pan shot here and then a long, slow kind of single shot, uh, mo you know, montage of a couple of different characters here. And then, uh, you know, we're going to need Wonder Woman 
to, uh, we're going to need her to be a, a whore here. And she's going to actually sleep with Batman. Because that's what we, the fans want. Like, the director just sits there and go just writes notes. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, you tell me. Okay, and then at the four-minute mark, you want uh, some of the parademons to come in. And you want the, the music in the background when they're coming in. You know, you, you want that to be Lil Wayne. Okay, we got that. Like, I mean, that is, that nobody is saying that. And, and yet, when there's this pushback of, oh, so the fans just get it. We should just do whatever the fans want. Yes. Yes, you should, because the fans are not ordering you what to do. There is still a, a understanding that you as a director, you as the writer, are competent and are, you know, and, and are hired to do a job based on your style. You know, if Michael Bay is hired to do something and the fans come in and say, you know, hey, uh, you, we, 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 you know, we'd we really like you to direct this, uh, you know, this Hulk movie, Michael Bay, please go do it. And if you could have Bruce Banner, you know, uh, have him really struggling with what he's got going on, we'd love to see if She-Hulk could be in there somewhere too. And the leader, that's that's kind of what we'd want. Okay, uh, you, you try and kind of make a film that the fans are asking for. If the fans come in and say, "Hey, Michael Bay, we're we're going to want you to have zero explosions, no slow motion, and uh, we're going to want this to be more of a, a you know a thinking film, and we're going to you know, we very specifically want you to cast you know X, Y, and Z." Like that, that, those are two different worlds and too often in movies and in comics, the give fans what they want is portrayed as everybody involved in the film, the writers, the artists, everybody has to shut the fuck up and the fans just tell them exactly what to do. That is not what that means. And that's not what Axel Braun means. Silliness, uh, because it's, it's. It, it's basically painting this scenario that says, no, you can't give the fans what you want. No, bullshit. You should give the fans what they want. You should not take orders from the fans. Those are two different things. The fans are, are basically telling you, hey, these are the stories, the comic stories that are well-beloved that we've, we've really enjoyed over the years. This is what we'd love to see adapted. This is what we want. Okay, cool. The, the fans... It, it, the uh, when artists and writers, particularly in comics, go off the rails on this statement, it's it's all they always take it to this bizarre extreme. Like, oh, the fans just fans just want uh, us to write whatever they we tell them to write. Okay, sir, please just tell me what's on page number three. Nobody is doing that. S just stop. The fans saying. Hey, uh, you know, we'd like a, a classic uh, New Mutants comic with the uh, New Mutants characters, uh, the ones that, you know, are most well known for being the New Mutants. We've, uh, we'd love it if you could give us a comic sort of like that. And then while you're at it, we'd love it if you could give us a X Force comic with the uh, characters that were most known for being the X Force. That that we would buy. We would like that. And the screeching response of, "You can't tell us what to do. You can't. Fans don't get to tell us what to do. We are gonna. We do what we want." What what is wrong with what, what what the fuck is wrong with these what, what's wrong with you? I, I mean, it's it's just it's baffling. But I found that one two tweet just just bizarre. Yeah, you should do the opposite of what the fans want. Yeah, that's a genius idea. I like I like Brian Hitch a great deal. Brilliant artist. I own some of his original work. Definitely like him. That is an all too common response to all this, and it's just a terrible one. Terrible. You should. You should give the fans the opposite of what they want. This kind of reverse psychology bullshit logic that they also tried to pull when uh, when people were upset with The Last Jedi. It's like, no, 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 we, we, don't, we give the fans something new, something different. You're making a summer blockbuster film. You're making a superhero comic book movie. You are not, you are not making a uh, the next version of Citizen Kane. So get over yourself. Yes, when you're adapting source material, when you're taking comic books that people really like and you're telling them, hey, based on the super popular superhero comic book that uh, everybody has read and loved for the last 50 years, based on those uh, characters that you've really enjoyed, here is a superhero story that is not going to give you what you want and defy expectations. What, 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 what are you talking about? S stop. What, what, what are you even doing anymore? Anyway, fascinating. What I find kind of the fascinating, the sad part, sad part to wrap it all up, is you got the uh, the porn director <laughs> there advocating on behalf of uh, adapting superhero movies, you know, as uh, uh, correctly. 
adapting superhero movies based on the source material. And you've got people who actually worked on the source material going, no, 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 don't do that. What is going on? Uh, anyway, there you go. What do you think of all this? Thanks for listening.